This video is part eight in our nerve entrapment series where we will be covering the dorsal scapular nerve. In this video, we cover the following, the function of the nerve, where entrapments occur, why entrapments occur, clinical signs of an entrapment, and lastly, how to effectively treat it. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Matt Maggio. I'm a soft tissue injury treatment expert specifically for neck, shoulder, elbow, and wrist pain. My focus is on diagnosing and then treating scar tissue and then reducing inflammation from chronic injuries without the use of drugs, injections, or surgeries, which does lead to a significant increase in overall functioning and long-lasting pain relief. I'm also the creator of The Peak Method and the founder of the Soft Tissue Treatment Revolution, where we teach overworked massage therapists a better treatment system that will allow you to cut your treatment times by at least 50% so you can stay healthy, avoid the dreaded burnout, and help a hell of a lot more people get out of pain. All right, so Nerve Entrapments Part 8. If you haven't watched any of the other videos in this series, I will link it up top here if you're consuming this on YouTube. If you're watching this anywhere else, it'll be written down in the description box below. All these kind of build up on each other. So if you haven't watched the other ones, go back and watch them because it'll kind of make sense as we go. But this week in Part 8, I wanted to cover the dorsal scapular nerve. So let's get right into it. So the function of the dorsal scapular nerve, this nerve provides the motor input for three muscles, the levator scapulae, the rhomboid major, and rhomboid minor muscles. Its job is really to help these muscles elevate and then retract. So basically lift up and pull back the shoulder blade. That's what it does. It is a motor nerve. So where does it get stuck? You know, the dorsal scapular nerve has a long way from where it needs to go. It actually originates high up at the C4, C5 nerve root. I've covered that in past trainings where the nerve roots come out, especially in between the scalenes and the middle and the posterior scalene. It starts up there and then makes its way down. It does have a little bit of touching to the levator scap. I usually don't see an entrapment there as much. Uh, maybe if there's been like a lot of trauma in that area, but mostly I don't see it as much in the levator scap. That tends to be where I see more of an accessory nerve entrapment that we've covered in other training videos as well. Where I really start to see it start to get jammed up is down here in the rhomboid area, you know, specifically right along the medial part here, you have the medial border here and then the superior angle. I see a lot of entrapments in there as well, you know, between the rhomboids, you also have the serratus posterior superior that comes in there and you have some of the cervical spine erectors that come in there as well. And all these muscles are going in different areas and causing friction and tension and all sorts of problems. And it can actually cause that nerve to get stuck in there as well. That's usually the most common area where I'm gonna find that dorsal scapular nerve entrapment. So why does it get stuck? Cover this every week. Poor and sustained posture. You know, we sit too long. We don't move how we should. Our arms are rolled forward. We don't exercise enough. We're stuck on our phones. We're on a computer all day. That creates a lot of tension in the muscles. When the muscles are overstretched and overworked, they don't get enough blood flow. They don't get enough oxygen. And what happens over time is it sends a signal to the brain. The brain goes, hey, there's a lack of oxygen there. These muscles are getting overworked. Let's try to help it out. Let's send some immature collagen fibers down to that area, which ends up being scar tissue. That scar tissue builds up over time, starts by making the muscle less flexible, then it makes it weaker. As time goes on, that scar tissue gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It eventually starts to expand and then gets stuck to the nerve. Nerves are built with like about 15% of extra slack, like a rubber band to keep them healthy as they make their way from wherever they need to go throughout the body. Eventually that gets stuck there and then it presents with that numbness, aching, burning, tension, and pain because that scar tissue builds up. You can also see it from an injury or a trauma. They got hit in that area, had an accident, a fall, something like that. Scar tissue is going to form as well in the healing process. And then that nerve is going to get stuck in there as well. And then another thing is just from um, past surgeries, you know, maybe they had a problem with a lung or some type of rib injury or something like that. When they go in and cut through all that fascia and that muscle also lays down a lot of scar tissue. When it does that, it builds up as well. Nerve gets stuck as well. But I'd say 90% of those injuries come from this the poor and sustained uh, posture over time. And a lot of times you get these clients that come in and they don't have any real mechanism of injury and it just kind of builds up. But then you start to take the history and you dive in a little bit deeper and you're like, oh, they sit on their ass all day. They're not moving how they should. 
this is what's actually causing there. They're getting that numbness, aching, burning tension because that nerve is in fact stuck. So some common injuries associated with an entrapment. First one's going to be what's called dorsal scapular nerve syndrome. I've covered this before. Anytime you see syndrome at the end of a diagnosis, it's usually just telling you that they don't really have a clue for what's going on. It's actually a fancy way of saying the dorsal scapular nerve is in fact entrapped. Next one is going to be chronic upper thoracic pain. That's going to be a big problem in there as well, because as those that nerve is getting compressed and getting entrapped, what happens is it creates a lot of inflammation and a lot of tension. A lot of the muscles, they tighten up to protect it. And when they tighten up to protect it, they're contracted all day. They don't get a break. I always say, imagine if you walked around and flexed your bicep all day long, it would be really sore, really tired, really beat up. That's what's happening in a lot of these muscles back there behind the neck. They're tightening up to take the pressure off that nerve entrapment because they don't want it to get loaded any more than it should. Because if your nerve nervous system doesn't work correctly, you don't work correctly. So your body does a lot to take the pressure off of there. Then we also see posture distortions of the thoracic spine. So basically what happens is when that nerve is loaded up, a lot of times we talked about it, that dorsal scapular nerve works with the levator and the rhomboid to elevate and retract back that scapula. So what it'll do is kind of roll your shoulder forward and drop it down. That takes some of that tension and some of that slack off of the nerve. So a lot of the postural people are like, oh, you just need to correct your posture. It's like, no, it's not a postural correction issue. That's happening for a reason. What we need to do is unload that dysfunction, which is that nerve entrapment. And then the posture will go back to where it's supposed to be. The posture is being done for a reason and a protective reason. And lastly, it's just chronic neck and shoulder pain. Anytime there's a nerve entrapment in there, everything else tightens up. Things get overworked. Things aren't happy. It's going to cause a lot of pain, a lot of inflammation in there. So how to find it? I always say, if you can't find it, you can't fix it. You got to slow down go through the palpation. And a big thing that I like to use is what's called bony landmarks, you know, things that really kind of stand out in different areas. So one thing I like to do when I'm trying to find where that uh, dorsal scapular nerve is or where it could potentially get stuck is I find the C7 spinous, which is the lowest vertebrae in the cervical spine. And that spinous, which is the backbone, it really sticks out and it's easy to find. So I start there and then I work my way kind of lateral to the side and I find what's called the superior angle of the shoulder. Then I want to go just below that. And basically my border is going to be what's called the medial border of the scapula. And then the spinuses as we work our way down, it's going to be somewhere in the middle there. That's where the rhomboids live. That's where even some of the trap goes down. The serratus lives across the board and you're going to be able to go in there and start to palpate and find it as well. Another thing that I like to do is I do like to palpate this with the client seated. And the first thing I do is I pull their arm across their body and down that helps to kind of pull that shoulder blade down and retract that. So it pops that nerve up just a little bit. And then if I really want to get some advanced tension in there, one thing I'll do is I'll drop their head and then I'll rotate it away. That'll help some of that levator uh, drop down a little bit, let those rhomboids drop down a little bit, then I can really get in there and start to palpate and try to find where I'm finding most of that tension in there. Because when a nerve entrapment is present, what it does is it's it's very focal and very um, deep in the presentation where we go in there. When it's healthy, the nerve should be able to go side to side. When we feel that tension in there and we feel that lack of bowing in the nerve, then we know that we have a nerve entrapment present. So how to effectively treat it? I've covered this every single week, but I kind of feel like a broken record, but I want to make sure I say this over and over again. Number one is just be slow, precise, and focused. So many providers out there just want to throw the kitchen sink at it, just do so much treatment, beat the hell out of the area. And they're like, oh, I got an hour. I'm going to beat up every single spot in there. And all you're doing is just pissing some things off and not getting to the root cause of what's going on. One thing you need to do first though, remember I talked about earlier where the dorsal scapular nerve originates from the C5 nerve root. I covered this in past um, treatment videos and trainings in this nerve entrapment series, but it gets stuck coming out in the scalenes up high, especially at that C4, C5 nerve root. I covered that in some of those past videos. So go back and look at that. You'll see how we palpate it, how we find it, how we treat it. That's going to really be important because you need to start at the source. Cause if it's jammed up down low, it's probably jammed up up top too. So you got to clean that one up first and then work your way down. Because if you just treat at the source, down low in the rhomboids, but you don't fix this up here, that problem is going to continue to come back and you're not going to get an effective long lasting treatment. Um, 
the setup and the body mechanics for this is going to be exactly the same as what we did for what's called the accessory nerve. It's just going to be a little bit lower down. So go back and watch that video if you want to see the body mechanics and how to get in there and effectively treat it. Uh, just a couple of things are different. The arm is down in a way as, a, as a opposed to going across the body. But overall, the mechanics are very similar. So go back and watch that and you'll get a better idea of how to get there and treat it as well. Next thing we always want to do is we want to get proper depth then tension. In order to break down a nerve entrapment, you need proper depth, then tension. And what happens is so many people go in there and they compress on it, they get too much depth, and then they have the client move through a range of motion. They think they're doing myofascial release or active release technique, or even pin and stretch. But in order to get that to effectively break down, it has to slide under your hand. So if you're too compressive, you're pushing on it too hard, it's actually not going to break down. It's going to cause some pain for the client temporarily. It feels better, but it's not fixing anything. And sure as hell, make sure you're not using your elbow. You get no feedback, no tactile sense in there, and you're just making it a lot worse. If you're using your elbow in this area, you are not doing anything effectively. You are only making the problem worse. And what I want to do when I'm treating it based off where it's kind of caught, if it's caught more on the middle side there, what I'll do is I'll have them start with their arm down and across, and then I'll just drop their head straight down. And if I'm not getting enough tension in there, the next thing I'll do is I'll drop their head straight down and then rotate it away. That's going to allow me to get that last end range tension and break it down and get that optimal tension. And the last thing is, we never want to have more than three to five treatment passes. I know you want to do a bunch of treatment. You want to go in there and treat everything that you can and blast away. But if you over treat a nerve, you're actually going to make it a lot worse. So many practitioners make the, I guess, the mistake of thinking that treatment can only go two ways. One is it can make the problem better. Number two is it won't do anything at all. They never consider that over treating it can cause more problems. And you have to be precise and delicate with a nerve entrapment. But when you get it just right and you treat this effectively, it releases so much tension and those muscles around there can relax. And what happens is you actually have to do less work. It's just better focused and more precise. So that's all I got for you guys. Appreciate you guys watching the video. One thing you can do is if you like the video and you know it can help other people, share with other providers out there looking to do excellent work and want to fix problems. I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.